Well, blessed be the Lord, people of God. I am Prophet Brian Mark Lopez Jr. Coming right back at you. Um, I'm, I'm excited today um, because I understand when seasons change, and, 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 and uh, I'm just I'm just in the now of what God is doing. Let's get straight to the point. Um, someone asked me to do a video concerning the Trinity, and I'm going to do that today. Amen. Glory be to God. So I'm going to give you a few verses of scriptures, and we're going to get into the Word of God to really dissect what it means when people say Trinity. Trinity, dun, dun, dun. And I also would like to let you know that if any of you have any video requests, if you'd like me to dig into the Word with you, I would be more than glad to do it. Amen. Amen. So let's get in, and I, and I appreciate you, brother, for asking me this. Amen. Let's see if we can get into the word. Let's start off from 1 John 5 and 7. And it says, For there are three, wow, that bear record in heaven. One, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now, notice we said word, right? We didn't necessarily say Jesus. So let's just get that together, right? And let's turn our attention over to uh, John, the first chapter. And it says, in the beginning was the word. There it goes again. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Now, let's move on. Because we're still touching on word. We understand that word was in the beginning. Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. John 1 and 14. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Wow, now the word have actually put on a, a flesh and it has now become body. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and of truth. And there we go. So now we, we brought it all together in 1 John 5 and 7 where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let's speak about, uh, we, we spoke about the word. Which was, which was Jesus, right? Let's talk a little bit about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that is. The Holy Spirit, uh, contrary to many people's belief, was in the Old Testament as well. That's right. That's why it says in Genesis, the first chapter, in His Spirit, wow, His Spirit hovered over the darkness, over the water. Yes, that was His Holy Spirit right there. And it, it was his Holy Spirit that came upon the Holy Prophets. And the word said, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. You know, and so now you understand that we have the Holy Spirit, we have Jesus, uh, and we have God, and that they are one. Now let's go a little bit deeper in 1 Corinthians 12, 3 through 7. Therefore, now let me just start off on the fourth verse. Now there are var varieties of gifts. But the same spirit, somebody say spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. Wow. Lord, somebody say Lord. And these are varieties of activities, but it's the same God. Now notice we just spoke about the same spirit, the same Lord, the same God, who empowers them all in what? Everyone. To each is given the manifestations of the spirit for the common good. So we find out the spirit. The Lord and God, they empower people all together at one in particular time. Now, here it is. We have Jesus. Let's, let's separate it a little bit. We have Jesus coming out of his own mouth in John 10 and 30. He say, I and the Father are one. So here we have Jesus actually saying, me and the Father are one. Now, let's talk about this. Go a little bit deeper because many times we talk about Jesus and the Father being one. Well, what about the Holy Spirit and Jesus being one? Well, 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 answers that question. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Some people will say, well, the Lord that they're talking about is actually God. But when you start to do the contextual viewpoint of which Paul was speaking about, he was speaking about Moses and the things that they had to do. And now Jesus came on the scene and he set people free. 
Glory be to God. Now the Lord Jesus is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You'll also find out when you start to do the Hebrew and you start to do the Greek, when you look up Lord Jesus, when it's, they're speaking in context of Jesus in particular passages, it is L-O-R-D, meaning Lord. Hallelujah. Let's move on a little bit more. Um. Uh, um, you need to understand that we need the Holy Spirit. We need to understand that the Holy Spirit was needed here on earth and Jesus needed to go. Let's move a little bit further in John, the 16th chapter in the 8th verse. When he comes, meaning the uh, Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of his guilt in regards to sin and righteousness and judgment in regards to sin because men do not believe in me. So Jesus is saying, well, hold up. I got to leave y'all. But I'm going to bring, I'm going to send, I'm a, uh, God is going to send the Holy Spirit. And he's going to make sure that he convicts everybody. Uh, amen. And, and it goes on to say that, you know, see how they run parallel and they work together. Let, let's move a little bit further. 1 Corinthians 15, 28. When he has done this, the son himself will be made subject to him. Um, who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. And he's speaking about in the last days. So here we find out, you know, you, you have people who actually say, well, Jesus is God. Jesus is God. They are all one, the Holy Spirit, Father. They are all one, but they have their own intricate uh, dealings that they had to do. Jesus had to die on the cross. Amen. The Holy Spirit couldn't die on the cross because he wasn't made flesh. But the Holy Spirit does his work in the man, in the flesh, while we're here on earth. Then Jesus go back up there to finish the job off. When he come back on Judgment Day, there's going to be a day where he turn everything back over to his father. That's where this, this, this verse comes in. 1 Corinthians 15 and 28. When he has done this, the, then the son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him. So that God may be all in all. Oh, wow, glory be to God. So this is just a little short video to really delve into uh, where, where, amen, uh, where we're going, why we need the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit help you in all things. And here's just a little, a little kicker because you get people that that's so religious and man don't understand the word. Well, you need to talk to the Holy Spirit. The Bible clearly says that the Holy Spirit shall teach you some things, no, all things. And in order for you to have a conversation, <laughs> glory, you need to talk. Amen. Open up your mouth and speak to the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for coming. You And the, these are, are separate entities. They are they, they have their own, in, uh, own job, but they are all one at the same time, if that makes sense to you. Amen. They are all one, but they have their own in particular job, and they are all so subject to the father that's why jesus always pointed everybody back toward the father he said i do nothing unless my father um does it the holy spirit he's only gonna say those things which you hear the father say and everything always come underneath subject to father god amen glory be to god just uh, i'm glad um my brother that you asked me to do this video god bless you god keep you and i love you with the love of christ